Today's guest on Bulletproof Radio is Jeffrey Smith, the founding director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. I know Jeffrey personally. He's lectured in 40 countries. He's been in the New York Times, the Washington Post, BBC, the Independent, Daily Telegraph, New Scientist, and every other thing you've probably heard of that's a magazine like Time, as well as on Dr. Oz, NPR, Fox News, Democracy Now! In other words, this guy is the poster child for genetically modified food and what it's doing to our world. For example, let's say you want to create a corn plant engineered to produce its own toxic insecticide. Uh, you might take Bt, which is Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, which produces a toxin called Bt toxin. It's known to break open the stomachs of insects to kill them. Then you take the gene that produces the toxin out of the bacterium, make millions of copies, put it into a gun, shoot the gun into a plate of millions of corn cells, clone those cells into plants, and voila, now every single cell of every single corn plant that you just genetically engineered has a gene-sized spray bottle producing a toxin that breaks open the stomach of insects to kill them. In corn, there's higher levels of lignin as one of his background results. The metabolic pathway that produces lignin produces rotenone, a plant pesticide that's linked to Parkinson's disease. So eating genetically modified corn might increase your risk of Parkinson's disease, but no one knows since the research has not been done. The genes already released into the gene pool self-replicate and will last as long as the gene pool of that species exists. So the, it will outlast the effects of global warming, outlast nuclear waste. The only thing that lasts longer than self-propagating genetic pollution is extinction. One, by organic. It's not allowed to intentionally use GMOs, although contamination can happen. Two, by products that say non-GMO on their package. The non-GMO project is the best. Three, by products listed in the shopping guide. And four, if it doesn't have one of those organic or non-GMO labels, you can avoid the nine genetically modified food crops or their derivatives or the animals that have been eating them. Now, 40% of Americans say they're avoiding or reducing GMOs, so they're sensitive to the situation. Not 40% of Americans are actually doing it. They say they're doing it, but they're sensitive to the situation. So if they're walking down the aisle and they see grape nuts, front of the package, full color, non gmo project verified, and they start to buy that more by even a little percentage, and, this, and the market share goes up, every other food company realizes, uh-oh, this trend is not firewalled behind the walls of Whole Foods. It's now in Walmart, it's in Safeway, it's etc. We have to remove GMOs. 